This is Richard back at you. It's a really exciting day today. We got our new 12,000 pound four post lift in. Uh, we got it all set up the last couple of days and got it working. It is beautiful. We're really excited uh, to be able to get the bigger trucks in and uh, get them in and get them out. That's what we're really excited. We got Miss Annie in the house. Look at this. Mm -hmm. She just, is she hanging out or what guys? She's she just loves out. it here. She, uh, she really does. But we got our core uh, on our 727 uh, for our little 68 Dodge Dart. I was mistaken. I called it a Barracuda last time. It's a 68 Dodge Dart. You don't see many of them around. But you remember the, the planet was split. If you come over here, or I'll grab it real quick. You remember the planet was split and the case was broke in the back also. So we did get our steel planets in. You can see here. Just show a quick review. This is a steel five pinion planet here. Uh, it won't uh, strip in the middle here. We're putting a six pinion rear planet in the back instead of a three or a four. So a big upgrade there. A must here when you're making the power that uh, Larry's making in his little 68 Dodge Dart. Of course, we got all the other uh, parts here too. Clutch band, uh, Sonex servo, uh, billet shaft I believe we can put in there. So we've got quite a few pieces already here, but we got this beautiful core that uh, Dallas, a good, really good friend of mine, come across uh, back in his trailer uh, in the very back, and uh, he said, Richard, hey, I got one. I can help you out. So I want to give Dallas a really big shout out. Definitely, we appreciate you, Dallas. Like I was telling you on the, in the earlier video, the, a big block has a wide bolt pattern here for the dust cover to bolt onto, where uh, a small block, the bolts are about only so far apart. Okay, that's how you can identify a big block and a small block. Now this is a core. It's gonna be all there. Hopefully we can get everything out. He said it was inside, wasn't setting any water, so that's a big plus there. Hey, that's working. The oh, I gotta grab board. a couple of wrenches, yeah. Wouldn't think that'd be that bad, but ooh. We've been really busy here trying to get things done. Definitely been around a while, it looks like. We do more now than we did. Mm-hmm. But it looks pretty. Yeah. Now this is your TV linkage here. It raises pressure when you give it gas in a tranny. It's called TV pressure. So when you push the gas pedal down, it, it moves this lever back and raises pressure in the tranny so it'll shift out under load. Of course, you have your park reverse neutral drive part there. I loosened that quite a bit. Put some old WD on there really quick. Try to loosen her up a little bit. There we go. A lot of these will uh, get water setting in them and they'll rust down here where the seal goes. So when you get the valve body off, you want to look right in here and make sure it ain't pitted real bad. If it is, then the, the stem right here could be not even be usable. So, part of the uh, bracket that holds the linkage coming over from the frame over to here that moves the lever. Probably some pretty rare pieces to find now. Now, if you notice on this tail housing here. You see how the mount is here? You see where the mount bolt's here? Look here where your bearing re release cover is right here, where the bearing release cover is on the side on this one. Okay, on the side. I don't know why they did that, truthfully. Maybe it uh, doesn't leak like that, but this is the old version where it's on the bottom. Let's see if I can get these out. Yep, they're coming out really easy. Yeah. 
Annie letting herself be known that she's here. Hello, Annie. So she can hear anything. Now here is that snap ring right here. You can see it right there. Looks like it's got some dirt in there, maybe some water. Got it put a little bit in the back. Maybe put some more WD down in there while we're messing with it. Let it soak a little bit. That's so how you just never know. This tranny's probably never been apart since it's been brand new. And so we're mainly going for the case. So anything else is a plus. Right, Teresa? We got it. Yes, ma'am, on this one here. Well, if you look up a big block case, you price one and see what they cost now. So everybody knows that what they got, pretty much. Make sure all the bolts are out. Definitely out, but it ain't moving very good. Normally when I do this snap ring, Push that snap ring right here out, the bearing will drop. It, it dropped a little bit. Try to work it. It's probably so dry in there, there's cobwebs. Oh, you just never know. Normally this tail housing would pop up a little bit. That moved a little bit better there than it did. How about a bigger screwdriver? A lot of people don't know that I've got major shoulder problems on my left side that I'm fixing to have to address. And you know shoulders are never good. Come on, I want to get that out of there. There it goes. Yeah. Uh oh now you can kind of see better this one here is on the bottom this one's on the side and I just uh, when it locks into this bearing it just supports this shaft from moving back and forth right here is that easy? Nah, this is bearings rusted down you know you could clean all this up with acid and use this shaft and stuff again probably but like I said we're after the case so whatever's we get good is good but that don't look good. No. But you can't throw this stuff away. You can't no. tear it down and part it out and, until you need it. So we were lucky to find a core in town. Everything else on the internet was just crazy to buy even. I mean, it was terrible. Wow. Pretty nice looking pan there though, huh? This could just be from bugs crawling in there and stuff like that. Doesn't look like it had a ton of water in it. Looks pretty nice. So anything we don't use, we'll box back up and that way Larry can put it up and save it. You just never know when you need it. You can see here what I was talking about where that seal runs at. 
And you can see here where the rubber actually runs right here. So it looks really good. A lot of times the water seeps down and just eats all this up right here. You have to scotch bite this part here off. That way the levers slide down a little bit easier. Now this, remember that one valve body we're using is a fully manual uh, cheetah valve body. Um, in our other video, remember I had the accumulator uh, spaced all the way out. We put a, a slug in here to hold this all the way out. What we do is, uh, once you, you put it in there, you got to check your distance from here to the valve body. Because if it sticks out too far, it'll hold the valve body up right here from sealing around here. It'll leak around here. So you want to make sure uh, that you put the right length uh, slug in here. It can move a little bit. You don't have to be perfect, but uh, blocking it is definitely a lot better for a firmer second year shift. Now look at this. Look at this, guys. That's what's cool about tearing stuff apart. You can find all kinds of stuff. Look at this intermediate servo piston. It just blowed plumb out. Look at that. It blew it. It broke the piston and everything. That's your intermediate servo c cover. And it looks like the snap ring is still down in there. Mm-hmm. Look how big that is. The outer oh, edge of this is still under there. Oh, see the yeah, shit down in there? That. Yep, mm -hmm. so, I do. Wow. I was going to air check it, but I guess there's no need to air check that part of it. Mm -hmm. Probably, not. Probably not, huh, Teresa? Mm -mm. Got our band adjustment screw out of here. It has been so nice here, huh? Yeah, it's really nice. And a little bit of wind. Have our band struts. Your band adjustment bolt here. Put in your strut like that, goes in your band. Look at that, blow that plumb out there, didn't it? Let's see if I can get the rest of that out of there real quick. Oh, wow. Isn't that fun? Crazy. Yeah. Now that, I mean, there's multiple things that could have caused that to break. It's got like a crack and stuff right there. Mm -hmm. High pressure, band adjustment wrong. The band adjustment gets really out of whack. The pit, the servo will bottom out against this cover. It'll smash it and, and just beat on here instead of using a band to apply on. So that's probably the culprit or high pressure too. You wanna, if you're gonna pull this servo out, you don't wanna grab the pin with the pliers without some type of cushion. I'll try to, and these things will cock and it's hard to get them past the snap ring groove because the, the ring wants to jump out in the snap ring groove. So. You just kind of kind of work it and try to get it out of it the best you can. Some of the Teflon ones, they're really hard to get out with the Teflon rings because you just have to cut them usually. There we go. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. It's neat to see how things can destroy themselves. I thought it was a motor. Mm-hmm. Here's your reverse servo here. That's way out of adjustment. That band is wore plumb out. Let's see if we can air check our forward and direct clutch. This is our forward. This is our direct. Holding good though. Almost looks like leaking between the gasket right there. See that leak? You can kind of see the fluid moving. That's like it's leaking between the pump and the gasket. See? It's not leaking there. Pretty neat. Get our shifter shaft seal out.
We always glue these in into the housing. If it ever leaks around there, then you got pull the valve body and all kinds of stuff. Larry don't even know we found this core yet, so he's gonna be excited. Oh, he was worried about even finding one. Yeah. Especially if the case is good. Yeah. That's gonna be stuck. Normally they'll come out like this. If you can't get it out though, it does have threads and, and two of the bolt holes cross from each other where you can screw a slide hammer in and pop it out with a slide hammer. So. You can see we got a little bit of water down in here in front of the tranny down the stator tube. Didn't get past the ring or anything. Let's look at the pump first. I just want to look at that. All this old stuff like this is kind of like um, candy. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain to a builder. When you need it, it's hard to find. When you got it, it's even nicer. We had four semi-trailers in town that we took apart. On this, on the earlier pumps, uh, I explained this in the earlier video too. If you over tighten your pump bolts to the stator, you can lift this edge up right around these threads right here. And when you over tighten it, it lifts the stator up off this body and now you have all cross leaks through here because you tighten it down so tight that you pull the threads up above this surface here. So you always gotta make sure that these, we buff these down and make sure they're flat all the way around and never over torque. The, er, the later uh, designs, the 518s and the 47, 48REs, they're all chamfered right there, so you can't do it. So just remember that. They made multiple stators, a one hole, a two hole, a three hole. I mean, you just gotta, when you're matching parts up, you just wanna make sure uh, you look for how many holes is in, in that stator right there. Of course, pump gears, the gas pump gear, they didn't change any at all. Got some good looking bluing on the back still. Yeah, I almost think this unit's possibly be possibly been in before too before by the pump bushing, but it's hard to say. Pump looks really nice through here, through here. I say anything good out of this tranny that's better than the one, the parts that's in his old tranny, we're gonna swap them. So we're just going to pull all the good stuff and build him a really nice unit. We have our high gear drum, four clutch. You remember on the other tranny, I put five in it by putting a forward apply plate right here and adding another clutch of steel in my earlier video. So these two videos, that if you combine them together, they're going to be really good. Now you do have a selective washer here. You have a selective washer here. They make different thicknesses so you can move this tranny around a lot. Okay. On the uh, earlier tranny, the load washer that sits right here was brass. The load washer coming out of this is like a, a, a cardboard or whatever you want to call it. It's made out of the same stuff as that there. So to me, the brass one is a lot better, but it was made. Oh, sorry. Bless you, me. Teresa. Of course, we have our forward clutches. Look really good still. This is our apply plate that we would put in here to add an extra clutch. So you have to order, if you're ordering parts, order that separately because you're gonna need one for here and one for there. So, 
I was hoping to out of this early one right here to get this metal. Oops, it broke. But uh, they do make these metal too. This is really fragile. Yeah. Um, they don't break that easy. They make this a bevel plate right here in, in two different styles too, a couple different styles. This is the better one. It's really thicker through here. So I wish I had another one to show you the difference. But... So your input shaft, your wavy snap ring, you got your forward seals here and your piston. I'm surprised those aren't through. Mm -hmm. Just remember when you put your seals on, if you look at this piston, it's tall here and short here. That, that way your lip of your seal can fold over onto this area. See? If you put it in this way, your seal can't, can't fold over. It's going to lay on that. But you always want to, if you can't figure out what you, uh, how you took it off real quick, uh, just look at it and look at your low side compared to your high side because this seal has to lay over into, into the short side. The center one's a little different too. You can look here. See how it's full here? It's got a shallow here. Same way, that lip's gonna lay over into that. See how that lip lays over into that? If you put that seal in upside down, you could probably get it in there and make it, uh, make you think it's gonna work, but when you put it in the gear, it's not gonna move. You, it has to be like that, but. That's something to know that right there. Good to know. Good to know. We have our band. A flex band flexes. They also make this in a hard band. That's just like the reverse band that's in the, the tranny. They make a hard band just like this to go in this area here too. Early motor homes, big trucks, stuff like that had the hard band. The flex band does still work pretty good. But if you ever run across one and say, oh my gosh, this is a weird looking band. This is a reverse one down in here, but they did make one just like this for your second gear too. So. Mm -hmm. See if I can get this snap ring off right here. The output shaft's gotta come out the back on this one. So hopefully, we can get this snap ring off right here. That come off real nice. Mm -hmm. See if our planet comes off, really nice. Remember our other one was split and totally stripped. Have our three pinion planet. So your sun gears, you still want to look on both sides of the teeth and make sure there's no pitting or anything like that. It's real critical still. Have our ring gear. Now if you notice here, the planet doesn't have a thrush washer on it like this. It doesn't have it. See, like that. This planet physically is the thrush washer and the planet runs on this spacer right here. Now this spacer does lock onto the output shaft and it does not spin only with the output shaft. So this is stationary while this planet is spinning other directions. So that's how they use that. So, so for Annie. Did she went outside? Did she go outside? Yeah. yeah, she's probably next door. This is your reverse uh, outer hub here. Drum, you want to call it. You want to look in here really good. Uh, your cooling oil comes in here. If your trains make a lot of metal, you're going to see a lot of damage in here. You can see some stuff here. Just heat, really. Can't feel anything. So we'll still try to clean this up and see what it looks like. If we need to use it on something else. Be a good piece to have. Now your band down here has a little strut right in here. You got to flip it out, and turn it. The band will come out with the strut. Put the band in, and then you slide the, you slide the strut down in here like this, and, and flip it down in there. That's how you put it together. And this band here is just about gone. There's really almost nothing left of that one there for your reverse. That's why that lever was moving so much when I showed you. I go, oh, that band's wore out. Uh, normally, when this is adjusted right, this doesn't move very far at all. 
Okay. Critical part. Perfect. I say we're don't we're not going to use anything on this part here. Pretty much trash to us. You know, if I needed to use it, I could take the governor off. Uh, I have to keep the support of this piece on there no matter what. Uh, actually, I could take it off completely and just leave the bearing. The bearing would keep the shaft from moving. So I could acid this up and clean it and reuse it if it had to. I wouldn't trust it running a speedometer gear on here after I cleaned it even. It'd probably just slowly eat the plastic speedometer gear up. Uh, but this is your governor here. Uh, acts like a, you know, your 700 a governor, 350 governor. This is how they did it on a Chrysler. A little bit different there. Mm-hmm. We have our case support in the back. This is one area you want to look at. I was talking about where this uh, drum right here runs. There's no bearing. It just runs metal to metal, steel to aluminum. They pressurize it with oil, and you can see now you want to stick it back on there, scotch bite it up, check it, see how much it wobbles. I always like to enlarge this hole just a little bit, put a little bit more oil on it. You always want to check down in here too where the shaft runs, the input or your output shaft runs in here. I've always seen wear down in here too. So you want to check that out. These are really hard to come by. So I tried to get a new one and couldn't find one yet. So This is where we're going to look at. Our case was cracked down in here before. Had a big crack here, and the crack went all the way along here like this. This uh, roller clutch assembly, when I take this out, it's gonna all fall apart. We got our RACO, looks really nice. That's a plus, our other one was terrible. We got a new roller clutch kit uh, in a bag over there, so we're not gonna use any of those. Main thing is you want to make sure this doesn't doesn't rock back and forth. It's not trying to turn or anything like that. Looks like they got an Allen screw right there. We can tighten down even some more. Let's get our reverse servo here and see what it looks like. I talked a bit about this servo in our uh, earlier video on our 727 about how we take that spring out of this piston or out of this servo right here, excuse me, and we'll shim it up to where it's solid. And why we do that is because when you put this training manual low, this band comes on. When you shift it to second, this band has to come off. Well, we're gonna we want to try to beef up second gear, so we want second gear to come on even faster. So this band's got to get out of there faster. To let the second gear band come on because if the second gear band comes on you're going to feel a, a it's going to feel like a really firm shift but it's really a bind up so and it's just a millisecond you know boom like that you know it's a kind of a little bit forwards and backwards but it's because that band come on before this band got off and that's why when you shift the second gear so what we do is as long as this band has got this spring compressed and holding the band for the distance of this spring right here relaxing the band's still on. Where if we take this and put it in there, no more than this moves, that band's off. It's not having to follow the spring release to get the band off. Do you understand what I'm saying, Teresa? I'm glad you do, because I think everybody else will too on that one. But this is a must. You can do this just about on all of them. Uh, not the big double wraps or anything like that, but uh, anything with a, a stall converter, you know, because it might firm up third gear a little bit. Uh, a reverse, excuse me, reverse, because you're going to make third gear shift firmer too. You're going to take the wave uh, snapping out of the third gear drum to firm up third gear shift. You take this out too. Uh, now you got a harsh reverse uh, because your third gear clutch comes on and your reverse band comes on to back up. When you took the cushion out of third, you took the cushion out of the reverse. So I like to really do this on with stall converters and stuff like that, but it, it really works good, guys. I'm telling you, no more than you move that shifter, that thing's in second gear. There's, it's just a nice little crisp pop to it. So, Teresa, I think it's getting hot in here, don't you? Yeah, and my wrist is starting to hurt. Your wrist is starting to hurt. Well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank all of you for watching. We want to thank Miss Teresa 
for watching Annie protecting the, the house and the shop here. Don't forget to, forget to subscribe, push that notification bell. I think I'm wore out too. So hey, y'all have a great day.